Well, I want to thank you for being a part of this. This is something. So I have a podcast, and on my podcast, it's usually just of like. Of course, stop. You have the best podcast. <laughs> You're incredible. I love you so much. I thank God for your voice. I thank God for your authenticity. Mm. Like everything about you, I, I think from the moment I met you, I felt like I'd known you forever. Thanks. And I think you're that way with everybody, which says so much about who you are. And I think that you walk out your faith in a really genuine way that teaches all of us as we watch you just to how to have faith, and how to hold on and how to fight through. Aww, thank you. Thank you. That means so much to me. I have really just been trying to figure out how I can be a good steward of the influence God has given me. And I think authenticity and being real and me meeting people where they are has been really instrumental in me being able to just tell people like, hey, we got this and we can move forward. And that's it. I felt Sometimes like, that's all people need to hear. For to sure. Holding on. We're not, you're not in this alone. You got this. And I feel like this podcast is just an extension of that. It's my way of being able to connect with women who I, ins I am inspired by, women I admire, and just kind of sharing their voices and, and their story with the women who are connected with our platform, just so that they can see that we all have different walks of life, but we've chosen faith. Sometimes we had to navigate fear before we man uh, manifested our faith, but that we found a way to believe again. And so I think that you have a story that is so incredible. What's so funny to me is like, like you are like so beautiful okay and you have this sweet kind spirit like you are just such a gift whenever you walk into the room you bring so much light and so much joy like you can't help but be happy when around you're when you're around Don Shereen and then I see these videos of you preaching and you're like telling hell no like I rebuke that I I reject that. I'm like, you better, you, you better let them know that there is some fight done on the inside of you. But you're Come like on, from Louisiana, nice right? You got to punch back. <laughs> you're from Louisiana, is that right? Yeah, I'm from Shreveport, Louisiana. So my parents still live there. Um, my sister, some of my brothers, and my grandmother. And yeah, I'm a raging Cajun through and through. Okay, so we're, okay, so you are definitely raging and you have become man one of the most preeminent voices I think for faith especially women in faith I think that you are showing us that it is okay to be beautiful and classy but to also have fight and fire and I couldn't wait to make sure that the women who I have influence over are introduced to your voice to make sure that they recognize that we come in all different shapes sizes and form but we all have fire down on the inside of us have you always had this fire or is this something that you kind of cultivated in life you know what I think what you said is so powerful that we all have that fire because it's the, the fire of the Holy Spirit, right? And he is the same. Like, yeah. he's bold. And, and he gives us a confidence that isn't our own because it's, it's not in ourselves. It's in who Jesus is. And when I was growing up, I, I dealt with a lot of fear. Mm. And fear is really paralyzing. I grew up in a home that was committed to God's house. I grew up with parents that walked out their faith authentically, that were confident and fun and laid back and creative and passionate about God, but their faith wasn't enough for me. I mm. needed to have my own relationship with God. And so I gave my life to Jesus at a young age in church, but there was this fear, this intimidation and uh, inward focus on myself, on what other people would think of me, um, a pressure to be perfect, yeah. uh, a fear of, of making the wrong mistake and looking foolish in other people's eyes. And there came a point when I was about 16 years old, had a conversation with my dad. You got to love those combos with your dad. Yeah, get you right on together. It wasn't a pretty combo, but he pretty much just told me, it's like, Don Shree, if you don't step out and get rid of this fear, like God's going to put his hand on someone else. Oh, goodness. And it crushed me. Like, that's a tough thing for a 16-year-old to hear. It was about singing because I grew up singing with my family. and I, I would hide and I would figure out reasons to get out of church so my dad wouldn't call me up to sing. I would try to uh, avoid it at all costs because I was so afraid. And I remember going up to my room and crying on my bed, having a total like girl moment, emotional, feeling like, how dare he say that to me? I'm just a kid. Like I should be hanging with my friends. Why is this pressure on me? And I'll never forget my mom came upstairs. She sat on the bed with me and she said, Don Shree, your dad is not mad at you. He's speaking to the warrior inside of you mm. to stand up and to fight. And 
it was a turning point for my life. Uh, the heavens didn't open, angels didn't come down. It was just, it was more like I had a decision to make. Yeah. And that's how life is. Like we just have decisions to make. And I had to decide to fight that. And it, how I decided to fight back is to choose not to say no when asked, to wow. walk through doors and to trust God. I think that's really all it takes sometimes. You know, if you're bound by fear, uh, you don't have to create the path in front of you. You just have to take the step when God leads you. And so I started to say yes. And every single time I stepped out and obeyed, it got easier and easier. The path didn't get easier. Battles get harder. But the ability to obey, there was an assurance because I'd seen God be faithful, you know? And so that was just getting over fear. Uh, it was, it was a self-focus. It was a selfishness. Mm. It was that insecurity of what people would think of me. And I had to come to a place where I was willing to look foolish or make mistakes and choose to accept God's grace for what it is. If, if we act perfect all the time, where would grace ever come in? And we don't act perfect all the yeah. time. We're fooling ourselves. So just that constant journey that we're on. But yeah, I had, had an experience with the Holy Spirit when I was in middle and high school. And that boldness is real. The Holy Spirit gives us a boldness and a confidence when we open up our hearts to Him and invite Him into our every day. He is that fire that, that allows us to, to be who we're called to be in Christ. I can't tell you how much I agree with that. I had a member of our team because, you know, we're preaching in empty rooms like most people are these days. And he goes, do you have like an alter ego? Because like you're like this way and then you like get up there and you're like that way. And I'm like, it's not an alter ego. I am just completely surrendered to whatever it is God wants to do in that moment. And I think part of the reason is when you start obeying. God starts yeah. doing things in your life that you know are specifically connected to the fact that you started obeying. And so now if I want to continue to see God show up in my life in this way, I have to obey. That means I have to do it when I don't feel like it. I have to do it when I don't feel qualified. I have to do it when I don't necessarily feel totally prepared because I just don't want to live in a life where I no longer obey that voice. I did it. I tried it for a really long time where I didn't feel like I was good enough. I didn't feel like I was qualified. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do it my own way and I'll kind of know God but not be in relationship with him but now that we're in relationship he keeps revealing these things to me that he knows about me that I didn't know about myself and exposing me to these rooms and opportunities that are a reflection of how he sees me and I just I love that the ability to obey it is not necessarily something that comes innately to everyone but it is something that can be practiced and when you practice it it gets easier and easier to do It does. And obedience to God is equal across the board, whether it's me apologizing to my husband or stepping out and saying something that I feel the Holy Spirit's led us to say to thousands of people in the auditorium. Obedience is obedience. And we're to value every act of obedience, Mm. you know? And it's like, I think valuing the things that we might think are little actually are the big things to God. Uh, Stewarding our spirit, our attitude the way we talk about people, the way we protect others. You know, I think that's the kind of obedience that God's looking for in women because we have this innate ability as a reflection of the God who created us to create community. And when we obey in reaching out, making room at the table for more women, being accepting, not being backstabbing or gossipy, all those things I think are acts of obedience that God can place an anointing on and that he can show favor in our lives through. What you're saying is so true about a woman's ability to create community because we create community over petty things. You know, like I look at shows sometimes like the Real Housewives of Atlanta and they are in community. Now, the community may be toxic. The community may not always be healthy, but because women are together, there is a culture that is created that has community in it. And so I think that when we are stewards of our spirit, we have the opportunity to create a community that is one that is honoring of what God has not just placed in me, but what he's placed in you too. And I really, I mean, Woman Evolve is all about honoring the gift of the woman beside you because it's not fair if you win and I don't win because your win is connected you're supposed to inspire me when you grow and you're empowered and I've seen you I saw you up there pregnant I'll never forget that video Whereas like you're, I think you were like 36 weeks pregnant and they said, you're going to have cramps and you're going to have this, you're going to have that. And you said, 
I reject that. And I was like, yes, what can I reject today? There was something about seeing you say, I don't have to stand for this. Now the kids are downstairs asking me for dinner. I'm like, I reject that. I don't have to. <laughs> Come on. But we do. We like, we have the ability. I think as followers of Jesus, we get to have this community that is countercultural. Yeah. It doesn't look like everybody else's community and has like a depth. There's a lot of great things to build community around. But at the end of the day, I think that what COVID is showing us is that if your community isn't built around faith, yeah, like there really isn't a foundation. And a lot of people, my friend says it this way, like spend their lives like snorkeling at the top. And you got to go into those deep waters and have yeah. those genuine conversations. And I think when you and I start to talk about the, the acts of obedience in our life, like, yeah, I think our life is an ever evolving path of obedience. Mm. For following Jesus, for being shaped in his image. That's what he showed us 2,000 years ago. He, he was just honoring and obeying the Father. So for us to evolve as women, it's a path of obedience. 